Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Ursula von der Leyen, the new president of the European Commission, today presented the proposed New Deal on EU climate policy named the Green Deal, which she compared to the landing of a man on the moon. From Poland's perspective, this Green Deal on climate, as proposed by the European Commission, might be deadly unless it is connected to a compensation system that will allow a gradual change in the energy mix on which the Polish economy is currently based. The Green Deal is a priority of the new European Commission. For the time being, it is a plan to reach this goal and the particular regulations are to be presented next year. The re European Green Deal is on one hand our vision for a climate neutral continent in 2050 and it's on the other hand a very dedicated roadmap to this goal. It's kind of 50 actions for 2050. The European Green Deal is a new strategy of development for Europe. For Poland, the major change in energy sources means enormous costs and this is why Poland is counting on receiving funds from a new program called Just Transition Fund. Poland is a country with a relatively small emission in total, so our impact on climate change is minor. That, of course, does not mean that we should stay away from the energy policy of the European Union, but we should primarily pay attention to the energy transformation stability and security. We shall compensate the losses to the economy. In order to get acceptance for the European Green Deal program from the coal-dependent countries, for which such a move would be costly, the EU Commission proposed the creation of a just transition fund. It is planned to be in the amount of 100 billion euros. In the meantime, experts say that the coal is a basic source of energy for the Polish economy and for individual consumers. Low price of energy equals to the competitiveness of Polish economy and forcing the change too quickly, as suggested by the European Commission, might require more time than Brussels wants. Tomorrow's general election in the UK will be a great test for all the British political parties. However, Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his Conservative Party face the greatest challenge. Johnson called the election to break the parliamentary deadlock over Brexit. Tomorrow, in the first December election since 1924, voters will decide whether or not they will give the Prime Minister the mandate he seeks to finalise Brexit on the terms of his deal. On the final day before the parliamentary elections in the United Kingdom, the political campaign is at its peak. Recent polls suggest a victory for the Conservative Party, but a Tory victory is not certain. Party leaders are head-to-head -head in last-minute attempts to attract undecided voters. Some speak at rallies, others bake cake. This is the other ready pie. This is the, this is the get Brexit done. This is, this, is a, this is the perfect metaphor for what we're going to do in the, in the, in the run-up to Christmas. If we can get a working majority, we have a deal. It's ready to go. You saw how easy it is. We put it in, <laughs> slam it in the oven, take it out. There it is. Get Brexit done. Take the country forward. Unite and level up. You saw, you saw the levelling up. We've done that already. We put the, we put the beautiful, the beautiful uh, crust on top. So that's the plan, folks. Tomorrow, crucial choice facing the country. The Conservative Party needs an independent majority in the House of Commons to be able to carry out Brexit according to its plan. Meanwhile, the media is sharply criticizing the behavior of Jensen, who during one interview ignored the situation of a boy diagnosed with pneumonia who had to lie on a hospital floor because of a lack of beds. If you don't mind, Sophie, what I'm going to do is concentrate on the five days before us, because that is what uh, I think the people of this country would expect. We've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a very short time to get our message across. It's a message of hope. As the campaign ends, the leaders of all parties are mobilizing their supporters. But this election is really about a choice. Tomorrow, the people all across the UK will go to vote, and they have a choice. They can elect a government that they can trust. They can elect a government that will eliminate child poverty across Britain. Whether or not a, a Boris Johnson supporting Conservative MP is elected or a Liberal Democrat MP is elected will depend on what Labour supporters decide to do in those seats. They've got that choice in their hands and in those areas where it is very close and where people are getting the Lib Dem leaflets, they need to vote Lib Dem to stop Boris Johnson. If we hadn't set the Brexit party up, Mrs May would still be Prime Minister. Brexit will be stuck in the weeds, and a second referendum, I think, would be virtually upon us by now. So I'm very pleased that we did reset the political agenda earlier this year in a very dramatic way. 
Uh, and we have dragged the Tory party kicking and screaming. In order to be certain of gaining an independent majority, the Conservatives must obtain over 40% of the votes as well as a 10-point poll lead over the Labour Party. If this happens, Boris Johnson will be able to finalise Brexit by the end of January 2020 on the terms of the deal which the House of Commons approved. US President Donald Trump has once again described the impeachment procedure against him as a witch hunt. According to the president, the Democrats who are demanding his resignation are beginning now to regret starting this process. During a meeting with voters in Hershey, Pennsylvania on Tuesday, Trump described this as the weakest impeachment ever. The investigative committees of the House have been engaged in an impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump's efforts to solicit foreign interference in the 2020 elections. Efforts that compromised our national security and threatened the integrity of our elections. Throughout this inquiry, he has attempted to conceal the evidence from Congress and from the American people. Our president holds the ultimate public trust. When he betrays that trust and puts himself before a country, he endangers the Constitution, he endangers our democracy, and he endangers our national security. The framers of the Constitution. Yesterday, the Justice Department's Inspector General released a report detailing the outrageous, scandalous, and unprecedented abuses of power. I'll tell you, law enforcement's so great. That particular guy wanted to be so politically correct. Oh, oh. We don't want to be politically correct. And now after two and a half years, now that the Russia witch hunt is dead, a big, fat, disgusting fraud, the congressional Democrats are pushing the impeachment witch hunt having to do with Ukraine. PK and Orlen, Poland's leading fuel company, is seeking compensation from its Russian suppliers for contaminated crude oil. In a statement from the company, CEO Daniel Obitek was quoted as saying that the company was determined to retrieve all the costs it had incurred, which costs comprise processing the crude oil, protecting refinery installations and the purchase of additional petroleum. The Prime Minister of Poland, Mateusz Morawiecki, was in Wrocław today to take part in the unveiling ceremony of a plaque dedicated to the memory of his father. A former senior speaker of the same and founder of Fighting Solidarity, Colonel Morawiecki died at the end of September at the age of 78. Ojciec zawsze kierował się misją my father's mission was to implant freedom and solidarity. These two values combined together represented the quintessence of his life. Freedom, he was always taking risks, experimenting, finding new solutions for Poland, for the world and for people. And solidarity, which means connecting people, searching for peace and democracy, he was always doing that. I am very thankful to everyone who reminds us how much he loved these two values which are timeless. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for Poland Daily Business, the weather and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow. Yes, yeah, sorry. That's all from the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.